Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, just the other day, I was uh, looking at the F-295 Pinhole Photography Discussion Forum. The forum has been kind of in a state of stasis since about maybe 2015, so about the last five years it's been kind of dead, but uh, most or all of the threads are still present, and if you're still a member of F-295, and if you uh, sign in or log in, you can see all the images that were posted. Well, I was always uh, involved in uh, the camera making forums, and I was sharing all my pinhole camera designs and all that, but a lot of other people were too. And as I was going through the threads uh, the other day, I came across a little thread from Russian photographer Igor Bryakolev, and he had an idea for solving a, a basic problem with multi-chambered pinhole cameras. And the problem is that, let's say you want to photograph a horizontal array of, of an image, let's say some kind of a, maybe not really a panorama in a sense of 360 degrees, but just a kind of a horizontal image, you'd like each of these discrete segments of the image to uh, have a linear composition so they all fit together in uh, an image that makes sense. But the problem with pinhole cameras or cameras in general is that they reverse the image left to right. The optics of the pinhole is such that it reverses it left to right. So it breaks up the continuity of that horizontal panorama into separate ones that don't fit together properly. So I first wanted to kind of illustrate that problem as best as I could, and then I wanted to present a solution to it. So um, this morning I went out to the North Valley of Albuquerque in an attempt to find some little setting that I could use uh, with this camera to illustrate that principle. And let's just briefly cover this camera in case you haven't seen it. I don't know, I probably showed it to you maybe a year or two ago. Oh, it's, it's made from thin chipboard cardboard. This is the kind of gray thin cardboard you can get at craft stores. It's basically put together with Pro Gaff gaffers tape. This is not duct tape. This is the actual true gaffers tape. So it has a little lid that comes off, and then there is a film holder that peels off. The film holder is has a little window mat, and it holds a piece of photo paper that's eight inches long by two and a half inches wide. So you can make four of these strips from an eight by ten inch sheet of paper, and there's little borders around each one. And then there are three distinct pinhole camera chambers, each with their own shutter. And this film holder fits right in like that, flush in there, and then of course the lid is the light trap. Uh, the other thing I like about this design, this was the one where the pinhole itself, there's a single pinhole on a piece of brass, and the shutters are four layers of cardboard, so there's two gaps in, in the this shutter of sandwich. The front gap is for the pinhole, and the gap behind it is for the shutter. And so what's cool about it is you can use just one pinhole, you move it from one compartment to the next and make your exposures one at a time. You can't do all three at once. It's like that. You move the pinhole and do the exposures like that. So there's, you can see how it reveals the inside there. So that was a cool little uh, project I made a couple years ago. This is an F-150 pinhole. It's a very wide angle of view, however. You can see how flat the camera is, so they're really super wide angle. And that became a problem today when I was trying to uh, shoot some shots here to illustrate this multi-chamber pinhole camera problem, and then we're going to talk about Igor Bryakolev's solution to that problem. So this is a good opportunity to talk about how I like to support these little box cameras since they don't have their own tripod bushing. And what I do is I make these little wooden plates of different sizes, and they have a recessed quarter 20 blind nut in them so this would be the bottom of the plate and then they have various ways of attaching the cameras like this one here you're just going to have to rubber band the camera to it but I like this plate a little bit better because it has these little uh, wood screws put in it as hooking points for the camera all right okay could actually make this into a musical instrument. Or not. Okay. Get these rubber bands together and then just to be extra secure, we'll put a little bungee cord across 
this way. All right, so. Well, I'm out here in the North Valley of Albuquerque on Guadalupe Trail and uh, looking for a little, uh, some kind of a subject matter to shoot and I kind of like this old gate. So I have the camera set up here. I'm going to do three different exposures and we'll see how they line up once we get them processed. Okay, so I'm going to use the Pinhole Assist app and if I can get it out of my pocket here, I like to use a blue filter over the uh, over the lens, this is an 80B blue filter, and this kind of helps get a little more accurate exposure with photo paper that's primarily blue sensitive. And I don't really have a good solution yet for holding the filter except for like that. So we have ISO 12, F150, and it's seen about 15 seconds. All right, second one's done. Ready for the third one. All right. All right, well, we're back home here, and let's uh, take the box off of the little mount. And uh, I have chemicals poured up in the trays. I'm going to use the 8x10 trays because, of course, these are 8-inch wide. They won't quite fit in the 5x7 trays. All right, let's go develop it and cross your eyes. Actually, the gate and the wall and everything is pretty nicely exposed. I thought it was pretty cool. That's one of the advantages of having a single pinhole and a multi-chamber camera is your aperture is, uh, is identical. And if you get the same exposure time and your light doesn't change, you have even exposures. If that's your goal. Uh, the problem though with this camera, because it's such a wide angle camera, is all three images look almost identical with the center one having the gate pretty well centered and the other two images, they're just slightly shifted left and right from that. So this doesn't really do a good job of illustrating that panorama effect, how each chamber flips it around. I need to make another test of this three-chambered camera to give you a better idea of the problem and the shot I did out in the North Valley of Albuquerque didn't quite represent the problem as the way I wanted to show it. So here goes another try. I'm going to try drawing these backwards. All right, we'll see how that works. So this is my attempt to show you guys um, this problem with multi-chambered cameras and trying to get an entire panorama, a horizontal array of images in the correct order, in the correct sequence. So we'll go develop this uh, strip of three images and see how it comes out. And because the camera tends to reverse the images, I went ahead and wrote the numbers backwards. It's surprisingly still wide angle, but actually it does illustrate the idea pretty well, I think. So if you look from the left-hand image, uh, it's reading five and four and three, and then you would expect the middle image to continue that progression and then the right-hand image to continue it, but the problems are all three reversed. It should have, one, two, three, three, four, five, four, five, six, but you can see it's not in that order. And so it doesn't make a continuous left to right or right to left progression of the image. Uh, so that is the basic problem with multi-chamber pinhole cameras where you have a separate pinhole aperture in each camera. And this gets to the whole thing where Igor Bryakalev's innovation was what he posted in that F295 posting. And I will include the link to that thread down below. But uh, you may not be able to see the images he posted because if you're, unless you're a member of F295 and have a password. But I'll include uh, in this video the images that he posted. See, he had an initial photograph of a sketch that he showed of how this multi-pinhole camera works to make a... Uh, a grid camera kind of an image where all the image elements are in the correct order to make a coherent image. And what his innovation is, is essentially you have a grid of pinholes on one common plate in the front of the camera. And then behind that plate of pinholes, 
very, fairly close to it, you have one common window uh, aperture. And then what happens is the view from each pinhole is masked off by that common aperture and projected onto a certain part of the film plane corresponding to the layout of the pinholes themselves. So I wanted to make a camera that would test this principle out. And so I generally try to go to one of my pre-made cameras and try to come up with a, with a solution. And I often use this workhorse camera. This is my 4x5 uh, pinhole camera. It has a removable ground glass, ground plastic screen. It takes the uh, right way style film holders and it has an internal pull shutter behind the pinhole aperture. So what I did here is I made a new pinhole aperture plate that has a grid of three by three, nine pinhole apertures and a piece of brass. And then just behind that aperture, basically the thickness of this half inch uh, front plate of plywood is that common window aperture. And then of course the film holder goes back here. So this camera was roughly about F220 in this arrangement based on the size of my pinholes. And so um, I made a number of test exposures with it. Um, keep in mind that the size of each uh, image in this grid is really dictated by the size of the window opening. If the window opening is really small, each of those sub images will be kind of small with a wide border between them. If they're too large, they're going to overlap somewhat. And that's what I had with the initial test right here. This was done in the world famous Joe Van Cleve backyard. There is some overlap. You can see that three by three sort of uh, tic-tac-toe grid uh, imagery. And you can see the lines, the bright lines where the images overlap. So what I did after that is I uh, adjusted the size of the window opening in the camera simply by using tiny strips of gaffer's tape to kind of mask off that little opening a little bit tighter. And of course I overdid it. So this was the second test. And it's actually very interesting. It does have a very window-like appearance or grid-like appearance because of those borders. But you can see perhaps that the view is very cohesive. You have the sky on top, the landscape of the houses in the middle, and my driveway in the bottom, and everything is, is ordered properly left to right or right to left. There's, there's no jumbling around of the images, so it's a cohesive image. Then later on, I made an attempt to adjust uh, the pieces of tape to get the aperture mask the right size, and I ended up getting the vertical borders between images just about right, but the horizontals were still overlapping this image here. Well, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do another exposure on the 3x3 camera, the test camera. I'm going to just expose this back wall that has the shadows of the trees and this little decorative sunny face guy right there. So. That'll be one final test for this video. Because of the low sun angle, you have a lot of shadows from the trees projected onto the wall in the middle of the day. And so this was the case with this image. And it worked out pretty well, actually. I had adjusted the uh, size of that uh, window mask again a little bit. And I got it pretty darn good. I think this bottom horizontal one is a little too wide. But in any event, this was a really neat image. And it really does illustrate, I think, the effect of using a grid of pinholes and a common window mask behind it to make a gridded kind of a pinhole effect. It's a really neat way to do this. And what's fun about this is the possibility of scaling up this effect with a larger box camera, a larger common piece of film or photo paper, most likely and just a little grid of pinholes in the front, you can make a multi-pixelated, uh, kind of multi-picture grid kind of collage effect uh, with one common exposure. I was at my friend Ethan's yesterday working on another project that we'll show, I'll probably present to you guys next week. And in the course of doing that, I brought this camera over and showed him. And I did not make an attempt to make the nine pinholes exactly the same. I didn't have a micro drill bit and I kind of thought it might be better to have slightly different size pinholes because if you think about it, if you get the exposure exactly the same on all different all the grids, all the panels of the grid, then it sort of just looks like a normal pinhole image with some kind of little mesh between it. But if you get the exposures a little different where some parts are a little lighter, some parts are a little darker, it really does add to the 
effect of a multi-camera, multi-pinhole kind of image. And I, I really like this one. This, this came out pretty darn good. And of course, it also opens up the opportunity for a lot more exploration and discovery about this process. So anyways, that was, I thought, a pretty interesting uh, little camera idea that uh, Mr. Bryokolev had posted uh, a number of years ago, and it kind of went unnoticed, I think, and I haven't really seen mention of this camera idea, multi-pinhole camera, grid camera idea, but it really works quite well for doing a common image, a, a single exposure at once with a number of different uh, uh, panels. I invite you guys to uh, try it out yourselves. If you have any questions about, you know, how I made this and maybe further discussion about how it works or whatever, drop a note down below and I'd love to talk with you guys. Well, in the meantime, as always, stay safe, stay well, and yes, of course, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.